in this capacitors experiment, you're going to be using what you know about capacitors to measure the capacitance of three unknown capacitors, C1, C2 and C3. You're then going to be using these measurements to predict what will be the capacitance when you connect various combinations of these capacitors in series, parallel and other combinations. At the end of the experiment, you're going to be starting by charging one capacitor, C1, and then using this charge to charge the other capacitors and predicting and measuring the voltage that will result. So let's have a quick look at the theory behind capacitors. So as you know from class, capacitance is equal to Q on V, where Q is the charge stored on each of the plates. So as you know, a capacitor basically consists of two plates. You've got a positive plate and a negative plate. The positive plate has charge plus Q and the negative plate has charge minus Q on it. You're going to be using a constant current source. So what you'll be doing with this capacitor box is putting a battery across here which will provide a constant voltage. There's then internal electronics that are going to convert this constant voltage into a constant current. Now, as you hopefully know, current is how fast charge flows with time. So it's just equal to Q over T, where time is seconds. So as you can see from these two equations, CV, capacitance times voltage, which is equal to Q from that equation, is equal to Q from this equation, which is IT. So if you were to plot a graph with voltage on the y-axis and time on the x-axis, the gradient of this graph is simply going to be the rise over the run, the voltage over the time, which if we rearrange this equation, you can see that's going to be equal to the current over the capacitance. So you're going to need to measure this current as you're charging your capacitor here. And the current, if that remains constant, you should get a nice straight line here as that capacitor charges up. So in this experiment, you're going to need to get a voltage versus time graph, which you'll do with the Logger Pro, and then use its gradient along with the current to work out the capacitance of these different capacitors. And you'll need to repeat this measurement enough times to come up with an uncertainty for your various capacitances. After you've measured the capacitance of each of these capacitors, you're going to be arranging them in different combinations. You're going to start by looking at a parallel combination. So parallel. When the capacitors are in parallel, the current from the battery can choose which capacitor to flow through. So this would be a way of drawing a parallel circuit with C1 and C2 in parallel. Now, with capacitances, the equivalent capacitance of a parallel system is just given by adding the capacitors together. If we had more than two capacitors in parallel, we just keep on adding them. So after looking at parallel, you're going to be looking at series. As you know, in series, the current has to flow through both capacitors. So here's C1, here's C2. goes from the battery through C1, through C2, and back to the battery. So in series, we've got that the one over the equivalent capacitance, or the inverse of the equivalent capacitance, is the sum of the inverse of the capacitances. And again, if there was more than two capacitors, we just keep adding them inverted in this way to get the total equivalent capacitance. After looking at parallel and series, you're going to be looking at a slightly more complicated combination where you'll have one of these in series with the other two in parallel. And for each of these combinations, you'll be using the measurements from part one to predict what the capacitance should be with an uncertainty, and then you'll be making a measurement to check it.
in the final part of this experiment, you're going to start by charging C1 to its, its full charge. So from this equation, we know that the charge on the, that capacitor plate, which we'll call Q1, and then this I stands for initial, because that's the initial charge, is going to be equal to the capacitance times the voltage, and we'll call that the initial voltage, because that's what you're going to measure. After completely charging this capacitor, which will take a little time, because the, the, it takes a little while to reach its total voltage, you will then connect this capacitor across different combinations of the other two capacitors. And what you're going to do is predict what's the voltage going to be when you connect it across these other capacitors. So when the battery is disconnected, just remember that charge has to be conserved because you're not creating or destroying charge in this situation. The only way that you could destroy charge is if you charged this capacitor up and then left it for an awfully long period of time because slowly the charge does leak out of a capacitor over time. So just keep that in mind. Don't wait minutes and minutes after charging your capacitor. You don't have to rush at an extraordinary pace though. Okay, so let's now have a quick look at how you can wire up this box. You're going to have to come up with your own method for conducting this experiment, so it would be a good idea to think about that before you come to the lab. Okay, so for this experiment, you do need to come up with your own method. But let me just point out some of the important bits and give you some hints along the way. Okay, so this is the battery pack, which is going to be supplying the 9 volts to your capacitor box. So start by connecting the battery pack to the capacitor box. So we just plug it into where it says input 9 volts DC. So we just plug that straight across like that. And then this capacitor box has internal wiring there, which gives a constant current out of these two outputs. So the, for the first four parts of the experiment, you're going to be using your yellow multimeter as an ammeter to measure the current. So because the current varies between 0 and 2 milliamps, set this to the 2 milliamp setting. And remember, when you're wiring an ammeter into a circuit, it needs to be in series with the components through which you're going to be measuring the current. So we can start by doing that. We'll come out from the positive terminal here into our multimeter and then out the other side. Okay, and then for the first part of the experiment, I'm going to be connecting these across the first capacitor, C1 here. Now, one really important point to remember in this experiment is between each run of collecting data, whenever you finish charging a capacitor, you need to discharge it. So to discharge the capacitor, we just want to connect that positive plate to the negative plate. So just take one wire and connect it across the two plates of the capacitor. So like that, just one wire between the positive and negative terminal of the capacitor. So before starting, you'll want to do that to each of the capacitors. You'll then run the current through it. And then as it's charging up, you're going to want to connect the voltage probe across that capacitor. So to use the voltage probe, you'll just be using the logger pro, which you're used to. Let's turn its power on. Start up the, the Logger Pro program. And it should automatically bring up a voltage versus time graph for you. And so if you're doing this correctly, as you charge up the capacitor, you'll get a nice straight line. You'll just want to have a start by calibrating the voltage probe. So if, if the two ends of the voltmeter are connected, so there's various ways we can do that. 
just touching them together somehow, we know that the potential difference between them should be zero. So you can just tell the computer that, that's zero. So that it's, it's now calibrated and ready to collect measurements. And then what you'll want to do is go to experiment, go to data collection, and you'll want to set this up. You probably want to collect possibly slightly more than 10 samples per second, though that's not a bad amount, and you'll probably want to collect it for approximately a minute. But have a, you can have a few practice runs to work out what the ideal settings are for that data collection, and then stick with them for the experiment. Just if, if you move this knob around, the current will change. Make sure that for each run of data, you know what the current was, because you're going to need to use that current to calculate the capacitance. Have a think about the method before you come to the lab. Possibly jot it down in your lab manual to save yourself some time in the lab. For the last part of the experiment, you'll start with charging C1. And for that part, rather than measuring the current, you're going to be using this device, this multimeter, to measure the voltage. So just switch it across to the 20 volts DC setting, measure the voltage across C1 when it's charged, and then you'll be connecting it across the other capacitors and measuring that. Good luck. <laughs>